Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. I am Chris Oviedo filling in for Diane Schumacher. This month, intensity on the hardwood escalates as Maryland Duke of basketball gets underway. Men's basketball leads off. The Dragons host Anne Arundel. Mike Leshner anchors our coverage. Thanks, Chris. Our analyst finished his career ranked fourth on the University of Wisconsin's all-time scoring list. It's a pleasure to welcome Chuck Nagel to the show. Thanks, Mike. Coach Dull's Dragons enter the game with a 7-5 record. Four players are academically ineligible. Howard's dressing nine players for this game. They've won two in a row. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Howard? I expect to see a very high-scoring game. Howard's coming off a double overtime win against Thomas Nelson, a game in which they scored a season-high 99 points. Four players now score in double figures on the year for the Dragons. Those four will have to have an excellent game tonight. Shoot well, rebound well, pass well. Ball control, basket penetration, very important. And the Dragons will have to win the all-important battle on the boards. Anne Arundel enters the game with a 7-7 record. They're on a three-game win streak. Anne Arundel's a D3 JUCO program. They've struggled against Division I and Division II Maryland JUCO schools. Chuck, how can Anne Arundel get the win? They'll probably have to score 100 points, having just said that the 99 points won it for the, uh, the Dragons against Thomas Nelson. Anne Arundel has come in during the season. Most of the games are very underrated, but they're not a bad ball club. They'll have to have ball control tonight. They'll have to shoot well. They'll have to hold the Dragons under probably 30, 40 percent from the three-point line. Uh, and Anne Arundel needs to keep the game very close. Howard and Anne Arundel square off next. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half, Willie Key connects with Robert Goodwin. Goodwin beats his man off the dribble, floater in the lane, and one. Dragons up five. Mamutajic with a little pull-up mid-range jumper cuts the lead to six. Anna Rundle goes back to Mamutajic on the baseline, takes the drive. Gaskins is there defensively for Howard, and it starts the break. Goodwin. Four on two ahead to Ian Vasquez, and he puts it away in transition. The Dragons on a 4-0 run stretch the lead to 10. Anna Rundle very passive, allowing the Howard offense to run virtually anything they want. Here's a good look at Howard's inside-out game. Penetrate, establish the inside game. Anna Rundle closes down the lane, the pass to the perimeter shooters. The Dragons start from the inside, then the outside for the open looks. Six minutes left in the half, now the Dragons move it to Willie Key. Beats his man off the dribble in the lane, extends the lead to 13. Vasquez here knows he wants to shoot, gets the pass from Key, gets his defenders on his heels. Nice form, two points. 15 first half points for the sophomore out of Harlem. The Dragons again on offense, watch Vasquez this time, he comes around the curl. Shows the jump shot, penetrates, nice pass to Wosu for the two points. Howard on a 14-4 run up 19 at the half. Second half, 20-point lead. Key goes to Connor Gaskins, who gets to the rim, and a 12-point night for the sophomore out of Randallstown. Willie Key keeps it himself. Left-handed finish off the glass. The closest second-half deficit was 17 points. Howard scores a convincing win, 89-59 is your final. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Mr. Key, that was a dominant win. What are your thoughts after that one? That was a good team win. Um, uh, we, we played hard for the most part of the game. Some of the parts, you know, we lacked off a little bit on defense, but they still didn't score over 60 points, so we played a pretty good game. Uh, it was just a good team win. Connor, what are your thoughts after this one? Uh, I think in the first half, we kind of came out with low intensity. So I think in the second half, we picked it up. You know, good team win. We moved the ball around a lot, picked it up on defense, uh, got a couple steals, fast break points, and came out with the win. So what's the key to maintaining the energy for 40 minutes next time? Really is communication and just talking to your teammates. You got to have communication. Otherwise, we're just out there, you know, just scrambling all over the place. So next time, yeah, we got to keep communication. Willie, what's the key to having strong communication out there? Uh, just, just talking, opening your mouth, literally communicating. Just talk. If you talk to each other, make sure we're in the right positions. Everybody just checking up on each other and holding each other accountable, then everything should be good. But when we're not talking and people are out of position, that's when you have to make extra movements, which lowers your intensity throughout the game. So just keep talking to each other, make sure we're in a good position. We'll be fine. Congratulations on the dominating win, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. 
My next guest came to Howard Community College from Coppin State University, where he served as assistant coach for the past nine seasons. He's coach at the college level since 1985. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Jay Dahl. Welcome, coach. How are Thank you? Thank you very much. I'm great, especially after last night. <laughs> well, um, how do you think your team played against Anne Arundel? Uh, I, I feel that we played about as hard as we played all year long, and that's always been my goal. Is is as as I've said in the past that I I try to teach effort, and. Uh, for 40 minutes, we didn't get our 40 minutes of effort, but we got about as close as we've been all year to getting that, and, and the final score indicated that. Several players are academically ineligible for the rest of the season. Leading up to an Arundel game, did you have to make any adjustments to practice? Yeah, we, we brought on um, three, three guys that I had originally cut from the team, and... Uh, uh, all three of them have, have been gracious enough to, to come back and help us out. As, as I said, I'm, I'm a teacher of effort, and um, we had some, some, some students that did just a phenomenal job academically, and then we had some guys who underachieved uh, at, in the classroom, and that's always a concern of mine because when, when guys underachieve, it's generally because they didn't put the effort in. And... Uh, because that's what I'm trying to teach here, um, that frustrates me. Um, it probably affected me more than it did our team, and, uh, and it affected the way I did things for a few days, and I think the guys kind of read into that, and I had to give myself a pep talk and say, you know, if, if I can't get myself up and, and going, then how do I expect them to get up and go? So um, it affected us, but uh, um, this was our first game back since that point, and we won and, and had a very, very good outing, so I'm happy with the guys that we have left on the, uh, on the team. So it sounds like it presented some challenges to you guys, so can you talk a little more about some of those challenges? Well, we were small to start with um, in terms of our size, so we have to move some guys that are used to playing in the perimeter into the, uh, what I call the four spot, which is, is, is a, uh, not necessarily a post spot, but you're ending up guarding bigger guys offensively you don't do a whole lot of different things that you would would uh, uh, would normally do as a perimeter player but uh, that affects us uh, it also affects us in terms of our teaching because we have to teach individuals more than one spot one position and uh, sometimes it overwhelms guys especially with my my system is not the easiest system to learn it's it's fairly complicated and, and so guys, guys really need to be focused and attentive during practice because of the fact that they have to learn more than one position. So with all this change in numbers, will you still continue with your philosophy of pushing the ball on offense, or do you now have to pick and choose when to push the ball? Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we won't change a whole lot. It's just that that's the way I like to play. Um, I try to get our guys in as good a physical condition as they can be in. I like to say we're the best conditioned team of all the teams that we play or in the league or in the state or whatever. Um, and so they, they just have to understand that they're going to get tired. It might affect when you take timeouts. I like to save my timeouts to the end of the game, but I might have to use them just to give my guys a rest if, if we're in fall trouble. Um, you may have to be in a position where you play a little more zone than you would man to man. And I don't have a problem with that, but when it's dictated because of your numbers, it, it, that's not the way I like to operate. But um, there, there's a lot of ways you can get around things is what I'm trying to say. And, and hopefully, hopefully uh, we won't get stuck in a situation where we would end up having to play with less than five guys on the floor at the same time, because that's always a fear. Um, what have you seen in scouting Harford? <clears throat> you know, I'm, I, I'm right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in a position right now where I really don't have a real good handle. I, I saw him early in the year, but with, with Mike, you know, he, his teams are always going to be fundamentally sound. Um, they're going to play hard. Um, he, he's a very good recruiter, so you know he's got good players there. Uh, what I saw from them early in the year, um, you know, they, they play a, a pretty disciplined system. Um, they're not out of control. 
Um, so we got a work cut out for us. Do you have a game plan against them yet? Yeah, you, you know, we're, we're in a situation where we're going to basically play the way we always play. Um, they're, we're going to dictate to them what we do, not let them dictate to us. So, so uh, you know, we're going to continue to press um, un until they're in a situation where they hurt us with it. Um, and then we'll counter that with, with some other press. And, and, and so we'll try to keep a pressure on them defensively. Uh, we'll, we'll pressure them. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pressure the ball, we'll play man-to-man, -man, we'll play zone, we'll switch it up, try to, try to keep them off, off, off guard and off pace. Um, and uh, really not a whole lot different than any other team that, that, that we're facing. I know our guys are going to be very motivated. Um, some of our guys who played for Mike last year um, felt that they didn't get a whole lot of playing time, so they're motivated. And Mike was here last night watching our game against Anne Arundel. Uh, scouting us and and, uh, and maybe that was the motivation why the guys played so hard because um, any any time you don't get the playing time that you thought you deserved uh, you, you always want to try to prove something to to that coach so uh, you know there'll be that aspect um, you know Mike's a great guy uh, everybody around this area you know speaks so highly of him my contacts that I've had with him have been very very good um, he's been very helpful with me in my transition here. Um, offered to, you know, to give me any any advice that I needed on anything. So um, it'll be a tough battle, and uh, we're looking forward to it. It sounds like fun. It sounds like a great season ahead, and it sounds like your team is doing great. Thank you for coming today. Thank you very it's much. Been very Appreciate nice talking to you. Yeah. Good luck this season. Thank you. It's time for more men's basketball. Howard takes on Hartford. Let's go to Mike Leshner. This is a game people around here have had circled on the calendar for a long time. Howard takes on former head coach Mike Smelkinson and his Harford Fighting Owls. In his three seasons at Howard, Coach Smelkinson restored the men's basketball program. Smelkinson inherited a six-win team in 2011 and led them to nationals in his second season, ending a 20-year title drought. Smelkinson brought two of his go-to guys from that team with him to Harford. Brandon Spain and Ali Conde led Howard to victory in the 2013 Region Championship, combining to score 43 points in the final. Last year, Coach Smelkinson's Dragons won the MD JUCO regular season title, ending another 20-year drought before being upset by Potomac State in the Region Championship. Smelkinson did not bring any players from that team with him to Harford. Those players are still at Howard, and they'll be fired up for this one. Chuck, what should we expect to see in this game? This should be a thriller, no doubt about it. A game of attrition, a game of which team is standing at the end. Both teams come in riding a four-game win streak. Howard has won seven of its last nine and is averaging over 90 points per game. They're hot, no doubt about it, but they're giving up 81 points a game. Howard must continue to apply pressure on both sides of the ball. They must get to the free throw line where they're shooting 65%, and they have to convert Harford turnovers into their scoring opportunities. Harford went 5-22 and last year. Coach Smelkinson has them at 9-10 and this season. Harford's 4-0 with Brandon Spain in the lineup. The former Dragon returned from injury January 3rd. He's averaging a team-high 15 points per game. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Harford? Well, obviously, as you've mentioned, Coach Smelkinson knows this Dragons club very well. He'll have his team pumped up, no doubt about this, and it's a road game for them, a big road game. They'll start out very aggressive on defense. They'll try to limit basket penetration by the Howard guards. And I have a hunch they'll give up the three-point shot, knowing the Dragons only shoot 29% from behind the arc. Ball control, an issue. Taking time off the clock, a big issue. And the number of possessions Howard gets is a big issue. This matchup will be intense. With pride on the line, Howard and Harford take the floor next. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half now. Ali Conde, whoop, picks his pocket. Willie Key from behind gets it back. Robert Goodwin for the alley-oop to Wosu. Doesn't quite get it, Key's there again. This time he finds Ian Vasquez in the corner. Three ball, got it. Howard here showing a very loose full court press. Harford brings the ball up the floor against that press. Dragons fall back into their 2-3 zone defense. Mike Smolkinson knows the Dragons well. He looked for that 2-3 zone. His team works the ball around. They'll exchange high post players, four perimeter players on the floor, running time off the clock. Again, the ball moves around the horn. Time off the clock, Warren in the corner. Three-point shot, perfect. 
Howard here on defense, half court, man to man. Warren sets the screen for Key. Spain goes down the middle for two. The high pick and roll opens up the middle for the Hartford guards to drive. Goodwin penetrates. Kicks it out to Connor Gaskins, no good. Nice job boxing out by Harford. Quick outlet pass. Nice job beating the Dragons down the floor for the basket. Fighting Owls on a 9-0 run. Key able to beat his defender, get into the lane, but the layup doesn't fall. Scrap for the rebound. Conde comes up with it. He's going coast to coast. Through contact and one. Instead of doing his job and falling back on defense, Vasquez goes for the steal at half court, which is not what Coach Dell wants to see. By not retreating on defense, Vasquez allows Harford the opportunity for a three-point play, a major error. Harford again, the man-to-man -man defense. They allow Vasquez the three-pointer, knowing the Dragons only shoot 29% from behind the arc. Shots blocked, smart defense by Harford. Big part of Howard's game coming up here, the full court press. Made free throw. They love to apply the press after a made free throw. The Dragons shoot free throws well. It's much easier and much more success to apply the press after a made free throw than after a miss. Missed free throw, Howard now falls back into its half court defense. The ability to make or miss that second free throw does set up the entire defensive strategy. This play designed to work against the Howard man-to-man. -man. Guard high post cut, weak side screen. Guard gets the ball, nice move for the layup. Notice the lack of backside help from the Howard big man. Harford now looking for an opportunity to penetrate, which they do. An easy putback for Xavier Cooper. Look how easily he gets to the basket. One minute left in the half. Fighting Owls with a three-point lead. Cooper goes up, Austin Wosu. Uh -uh. Vasquez pushes it up the floor, but Brandon Spain forces the turnover and takes it the other way. Now he's got no numbers, so he pulls up and buries the jumper. 12 first half points for the former Dragon. He leads all scores at the half. Second half now, four point lead for Harford. Key up against Malachi Sene. Rattles in and out, but Vasquez there for the putback and makes it a one possession game. Goodwin, guarded by Sene, looking to penetrate. Nice defense, kick out to Vasquez. Oh, the three ball. Harford gives up the three. Vasquez burning bridges and a dagger against his old coach. Howard takes back the lead. Harford has tied it up. Here's Spain. Gets inside. Gaskins is there defensively. Spain with the miss. Wosu hauls in the rebound. He leads the Dragons with eight boards. Goodwin now draws some attention in the corner. To Wosu. To Vasquez. Fouled by Spain, his second personal. Vasquez makes his free throws. He scored seven points coming out of the locker room. Cameron Smith wide open behind the arc. No good, and Gaskins with a huge rebound. Willie Key leads the three-on-three -three break. Takes it himself, left hand attacks the rim, and he buries it. Big time play from the sophomore out of Baltimore. The Dragons lair is rocking, and Coach Dahl showing some passion. His players are eating this up. Here's where the momentum of the game may have switched back in favor of Howard. Minutes into the second half, the Dragons come out on fire. Must have been an inspired Dragon locker room at halftime. After the Harford timeout, Spain driving. Beautiful feed to Cooper with the two-handed flush. Cuts the deficit to two points. The freshman out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina has nine points. Willie Key against Cedric Hines. Goes right, goes left, pull up jump shot, and Connor Gaskins with his fifth offensive rebound and the putback. The Dragons playing with emotion, responding to this big game atmosphere. Cooper open in the middle. Heinz finds him. He gets to the rim and a beautiful finish. Two point game. Five minutes in now. Key. Denied entry into the lane. Bounce pass to Vasquez. Vasquez swings it to the corner. Harford has given up the three, and Howard's two for three from three point range in the second half. Ali Conde draws three dragons. Spain is wide open and he buries the three. Goodwin, guarded by Conde. Goodwin into the lane. Now it's Will Jackson says, eh -eh. and Brandon Spain loves it. Passion on both sides of this young rival. 13 minutes to play now, tied at 49. Willie Key all the way to the rack and he regains the lead for Howard. The sophomore out of Parkville High School has 12. Next Howard possession, Goodwin. Goes right, stops, 
pops off the glass. Dragons have a four point advantage. Other end of the court now, Spain. Terrific pass to Sene. Down low to Jackson. Whoa, Sue, great reaction. Clean block. He outworks two owls, and Gaskin secures it for Howard. Goodwin pushes the ball, and officials here call a foul on Spain. Then they hit him with a T. Vasquez and Goodwin sink all their free throws, and they extend the lead to eight. Spain goes to the bench. Hines once again. Down low to Jackson. Gaskins with the block. Whoa, Sue with the block. Here's an example of Osu and Gaskins really stepping up on the defensive end. They make it extremely difficult for Harvard to get any easy baskets. Nine minutes left, seven point lead for Howard. Key checked by Tony Floyd. Great penetration here from Key, alley up to Osu, who was fouled. Harford seems to be standing around, perhaps tired, knowing their chances of victory are fading badly. Osu missed the free throw. Gaskins grabbed a rebound, his 12th of the night. And here's number 13 with a putback bucket for the Randallstown High School grad. Harford not done yet. Coach Smelkinson's fighting Owls on a 4-0 run. Floyd denying Key the lane. Hines gets a hand on the ball. Gaskins now looking to penetrate. Cooper, uh -uh. Harford asserting themselves on defense. Still seven minutes remaining. Howard's lead is down to five. Vasquez attacking the basket, collides with Conde. It's going against Harford. Vasquez fought through the pain, converts both free throws. Hines on the drive, outside to Floyd. Brandon Roberson's all over him. Hines, baseline. Goodwin hits it off the knee of Hines. That is not what Coach Smelkinson wants to see. Other end of the floor, key into the heart of Harford's defense. The Dragons respond with a 4-0 run of their own, and the lead is back to nine. Four minutes remaining, key penetrating once again, draws the attention of Cooper. Great feed to Wosu, and Cooper fouls him. 2.53 on the game clock, Harford brings the press. Goodwin dribbles through, keeps his head up, and Floyd fouls him from behind. Goodwin knocks down his free throws, and here's Robert Goodwin again. Into the paint, floater over the 6-5 forward, a 17-point night for the freshman out of Baltimore, his fourth consecutive game in double figures. 134 remaining, 11-point lead for Howard. Key draws the defender here, finds Wosu all alone. Retribution for Howard's sophomores. The five Dragons who played for Coach Smelkinson last year combined to score 52 points, haul in 42 rebounds. Those five players out-rebounded Harford's entire team. Howard wins. Let's go down to Jasmine Harris. After tonight's game, how do you feel, Connor? I mean, it was excellent when, when, you know, team communication. We worked hard on defense on the first half. We came out slow, but... Uh, Coach Doe pumped us up, got us out there in the second half, and we came out with the win. Uh, how did Coach Doe prepare y'all for this game? How did he pump y'all up? Like, I saw him in the, I saw him doing the one timeout. He just in a huddle, chest bumping at five. And how did Coach Doe get that in y'all? Well, he really just brought the energy like he always do, practice games. And he knew this, this was a big game with Coach Mike coming back for his homecoming and whatnot. And Hoffman was talking about no loss January, so we just got out and went out and get the win. All these blocks, Austin. <laughs> like, what motivates you to get up there and block, the, block offensive player shots? Like, honestly, I take it upon myself to be that the pride on defense. Um, I really talk to my teammates a lot, uh, especially Connor um, down low. I want us to be a big force down down low, and you know, just just really protect that rim. And you know, blocking shots, I was really you know <laughs> concentrating a lot on on the guys going up, and I, I was able to get those blocks. So, plan last year for Coach Mike. I know this is just a regular conference game, but what did this game really mean to, especially you three, what did it mean to you three? It meant a lot because he took players that he wanted to take and we didn't have the opportunity to really show our game, but this tonight really showed our game. What was the emotions for this game, to, for you? Uh, I mean, this is a big game. I mean, considering that he used to coach here, you know, and he left, I mean, it just, it feels good to beat them, basically. I mean, that's, that's, I don't really have nothing much else to say. I mean, it just feels good to beat them, you know. Uh, Austin, what did this game mean to you? It's meant a lot, man. Um, seeing Coach Mike again, um, it was a, especially a big surprise. Um, I felt very excited for this game tonight. Um, going out, how much these guys talked about, you know, they had all the pieces they needed. And I just really felt strong in what we had, you know, all the pieces that we had. And tonight we going out playing as hard as we did and able to come out with a 10 point win. It really feels good. It really does. Congratulations on the win, fella. Thank you. Thank you. 
And for Dragon Lair update, I'm Jasmine Harris. Now it's time for women's basketball. Howard takes on Hagerstown. Coach Anderson's Dragons enter the game with a 3-8 record. Howard's coming off a 10-point win over Anne Arundel, arguably their best performance of the season. Chuck, what do you expect to see from the Dragons? Well, we know that Howard's a very young team, Mike, and still trying to find some consistency on both sides of the ball. The good news for them, all five scorers are in double figures, led by Patrice Jones at 15 points a game. This makes it tough for Hagerstown or any opponent to really concentrate offensively on any one player. The downside, though, Howard shoots 31% from the floor, 20% from behind the arc, and just 63% from the free throw line. Not good numbers. They must improve on these tonight. Also take better care of the ball and defend Hagerstown's low post game. Hagerstown enters the game with a 12-2 record. The Hawks have won 10 consecutive games. They're 4-0 against Maryland Juco schools with an average margin of victory of 20 points against conference opponents. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Hagerstown? A very tough game. They're a very tough team, one of the best in the conference, if not the region. They've won 10 of their first 12 games, and they've proven to be very dominant in those 10 wins. Strong low post game, excellent passing team, and despite a roster full of freshmen, they are now playing like veterans. They're well coached, and they're going to be tough to beat. Howard looks to take down Hagerstown. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half here, Gina Booker up top goes to Lauren Thompson. What a nice drive by Thompson. Sees an opening, uses the left arm to create space, and puts it high off the glass. The freshman out of Oakland Mills is hot right now. Four consecutive games and double figures for Thompson. Jazz Spruill sends it to Deja Adams, who pounds it inside to Olivia Turner, and she reclaims the lead for Hagerstown. Easy to know the game plan for Hagerstown will be to get the ball low to Turner, who on this play scores with ease. Hawks have scored four unanswered. Janae West sizes up the defense. Dragons and Amanda Man defense. Good entry pass. Turnaround jump shot from the baseline. Well done. Second half now. Hawks on a 7-0 run. Spruill with the turnover. And she outruns two Dragons on her way to the rack. 12-point lead for Hagerstown. West. Top of the key. Knocks it down. Turner. Looking to get the ball inside. Lauren Thompson gets a hand on it. Booker stays with it. Here comes Gina Booker in transition. Booker attacks the rim. Woo! And one. Down 16. Howard's fighting to get back in it. Gina Booker forces another turnover, playing aggressively. She takes it to the rim. Scoop! 15-point night for the sophomore out of Baltimore. But the deficit proves to be too much to overcome. Hagerstown improves to 13-2. and 81-70 is your final. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. All right, Ms. Booker, that was a tough fall game. What are your thoughts? Um, I think we played hard. Like, it was a hard game to win or come out to, but I think we had a pretty good game despite the loss. So. It was a lot of effort out there. Uh, Ms. Thompson, how do you feel after the game? Um, I feel like we fought hard. We know uh, we've had a rough season so far, and I think we came out with a bang, and we just did what we were supposed to do. All right, Gina. Um, you might see Hagerstown again in the Region 20 tournament. Uh, what did you learn from this game? I just learned that we just got to keep attacking and keep everything up and just play harder. Like, we play hard tonight, but we got to play harder if we see them again. All right, you showed some heart out there, ladies. That was a great game. Thank you. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash Sports. The March Madness edition of Dragon's Lair Update premieres Friday, March 13th on HCC TV. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!